Okay, Assalamualaikum. Today, I would like to uh, continue on with our syllabus uh, titled Job and Batch Costing. So, we, before we begin, as usual, please have your past years and your textbook in front of you so that we can uh, refer to as we go along. We begin our chapter by introducing what is job costing. So job costing is a specific order costing. It means the identification of costs that are attributed to an individual job. So job costing is the determination of costs for a specific job, such as manufacturing products, according to customer's specification. Therefore, each job is treated as a separate entity for the purpose of costing. What it means that for each job that the company uh, produced or manufactured is based on the or on the customer's requirement or the customer specification, which means also that each product are not identical, are not identical, and may vary in sizes, design, and specifications. So each job that produced by the company is unique from each other, and they have a separate job cost cut and there is no uniformity in the flow of process on the flow of production because of the different production processes so it means that for one job the company may have to go a different job uh, a different production flow as compared to another job okay the production is not continuous because its job is accepted based on uh, work order not because we want to uh, keep our stock for future sale okay therefore each job has its own calculated cost and its own and its own selling price so what we need to do is we need to prepare job cost cut so we're going to do that in your um, past year later on how do we calculate the total cost for one job? So what is job, job cost card? It is used to collect the, the cost of each job. It consists of date of the order, number of the job order, number of units to be made, and the materials, labor hours, and overhead needed to complete the job. So it's simply a document that is used to record the manufacturing process uh, sorry, the manufacturing costs allocated by the company in order to complete the, the job. So job cost card is used as part of the company's accounting record and the finished job is sent to be invoiced to the customer. So customer will know how many hours have been spent to complete um, the, the, uh, to complete their work order, uh, sorry, their product order. So in the job cost card, we must also absorb not just the production cost, but also the non-production cost, such as the administration, selling and distribution. And then we calculate the profit or loss on the job calculated based on the method specified by the questions. Okay, so what are the advantages and disadvantages of job costing? So you can read these in your textbook because I take them verbatim from the textbook. Okay, but what you need to know is that uh, you you just take one. Uh, so ju you just take two advantages and two disadvantages uh, for you to answer the theory part questions. Okay. So you can read this later on when I upload uh, the video in the Google Classroom. Uh, as well as the PDF copy of these slides. Or you can also refer to your textbook. Next, we need to understand what is batch. Okay, so batch is different because if previously job costing is we manufacture one unique product or several unique product based on the customer specifications, but batch costing is where we we produce a similar or identical product or homogeneous product batch by batch. Okay, 
Uh, a batch consists of a specific number of products or units and the number varies from one batch to another. So it means that maybe for first batch, like we take an example of a pharmaceutical company which produce a uh, panadol or, 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 pen, or, or painkiller. Okay, so let's say for first batch, the company produce 100, 100 pills of panadol. And then they pick everything up and they say this is batch number one. Okay, and then for, for the second batch, they produce another, uh, another type of medicines. For example, like soluble, panadol soluble. Okay. And then they produce another 100,000 of panadol soluble. Okay. For the third batch, they produce another type of pill, active fast, for example. Okay. So for each batch, uh, they produce in mass production, but they are different from one batch to another. Because we want to avoid uh, our workers to become bored in manufacturing the product. Okay. So the characteristic of batch costing is that customer order a quantity, a huge amount of quantity of identical and or homo homogeneous items. So again, yeah, these are the advantages and disadvantages of batch costing, which you can uh, read through from your textbook uh, or you can read through for my uh, slide PDF slides when I upload in the Google Classroom. Okay, so what are the differences between the job and batch costing? Okay, so job costing mainly used by companies who specialize in making a single product. Okay, for example, let's say that you are an advertising company. Okay, an, an advertising company. It means that you specialize in producing a TV adverti advertisement. Okay, so one job for a for a customer is not similar to another job prepared for another customer okay so one advertise uh, tv advertisement that you prepare to a customer is not similar to a tv ad that you make for another customer so job will be done based on customers order okay and job are allocated and accumulated according to specific order or job sorry cost are costs are calculated and accumulated. So each job is treated as a separate entity for the purpose of costing and cost can only be determined at the end of the completion of the job. Okay, we cannot make an estimation in job costing. How can we estimate the future or estimate the anticipated cost that may arise from a unique job? So we can only know the cost after we have completed the job. Okay, as opposed to job costing, batch costing mainly used by company which involve in mass production of identical or similar product. Yeah, for example, that I gave you, the pharmaceutical company that produces pill. Product are produced in mass production. Okay, batch, com batch comprises of many similar units which can be used as cost unit in ascertaining the cost. Okay, for example, let's say that uh, the first batch where the company produced 100,000 units of Panadol. Okay, so let's say the total cost for the 100,000 unit is 500,000 ringgit. So we can, co we can compute the cost per unit of one pill by using the number of pill as a cost unit. Meaning that 500,000 ringgit divided by 100,000 units that you produce. So to produce one pill, uh, it costs you five ringgit which is kind of expensive. Maybe my example is not very good, but that's how you calculate. Okay, uh, a separate cost sheet is maintained for each batch using batch number. So cost per unit is determined by dividing total cost of a batch by number of batch in that batch. Yeah, that's why the total cost is 500,000 and the number of unit in that batch is 100,000 units of pills. So you can divide, so you get the cost per unit. So how do we calculate the selling price? Before we can calculate selling price, we need to know the method used by the company to determine their margin or sorry, their profit. Okay. So we have two methods that we can adopt, the company can adopt. First is the profit markup. Okay. And the other one is profit margin. Okay. So you need to read through the question and please carefully note which method that the, that, that the 
question is asking you to use. Okay. So what is profit market? Profit market is calculated based on total cost. Whereas profit margin is calculated based on selling price. So two different things. So if it's based on total cost, then the 100% should be on the total cost. Okay, so total cost plus with the profit of 20%. Let's say that they, that's the um, that's, that's the profit that they want to maintain. And therefore, the selling price is 120%. But if you calculate the profit based on the selling price, therefore, selling price will be 100%, meaning that total cost is 80%. So why is it important? Because when we prepare the cost job sheet, or the batch cost sheet, we will get the total cost. You don't know the selling price, but we get the total cost. For example, let's say that you have calculated total cost is 100,000 after you add up all the costs that you have. And the company's policy is to maintain 20% profit markup. 20% profit markup. So you know 100% is on the total cost, and you know the profit is 20%. So how do you how do I get the 20,000 here? 20% and uh, 20 divided by 100 times with 100,000 ringgit. So we call this proportionate method. You have learned this in part 1, eh? Pro proportional method. So 20 divided by 100 times 100,000 so the profit is 20,000. So if your cost is 100,000, your profit is 20,000, therefore your selling price is 120,000. In total, eh? in total. Okay. But if you use the uh, margin method, yeah, profit margin, you know that 80% is on the total cost because 100% belongs to the selling price. So 20 divided by 80, times with 100,000 and then you get your profit to be at 25,000. Therefore, your selling price here is 125,000. So please, please be careful how you uh, find or how you calculate your profit okay? because it will affect your selling price. Okay, so we go to past year question, June 2019. So quickly go through your past years and refer to uh, the copy that you have within uh, in front of you or you can uh, read together with me prestige printing receive an order to print 1000 units of banner uh, the job is named job 151 with the profit markup of 20 percent so the keyword here is the markup of 20 percent yeah and they give you all the costs needed to complete one job and they will ask you to prepare a cost sheet that show clearly prime cost, total production cost, total cost, and selling price. So within the, the uh, cost, the company has direct material, direct labor, okay, where for each department, printing department has three workers uh, which who works eight hours per day for f uh, five days per week for four weeks. And then we also have direct expense, which is the hire of special ed printer at 3,000 ringgit. And we also have the overhead, which consists of production overhead, administration overhead, and selling and distribution overhead. Okay, so it says here, for production, absorb 10 ringgit per direct labor hour for each department. Okay. So this is how you prepare your answers. You prepare the cost statement. You prepare the cost statement. We start off with direct material. Okay, so 3,000 meter times with the 20 ringgit per meter. So you get 60,000 here. And then printing liquid, 300 liters times with the 10 ringgit. You get the 3,000. So your total direct material is 63,000. For printing labor, you need to find out how many hours they have worked. Yeah, so... It's not three weeks, it's supposed to be three hours. Eh, sorry, three workers, sorry. Three workers, not weeks, eh? three workers times eight hours times with the five days per week times with the four weeks times with the 50 uh, ringgit per hour. You should get 24,000. 
Okay, efficient department, two workers times with the eight hours times with the five days times with the four weeks times with the 25 ringgit per hour. And you get a total direct labor hour of 32,000 plus with the direct expense. So your prime cost is 98,000. Please label this accordingly. Eh? For your production overhead, okay, you find out your uh, lab, total labor hour times with the OAR, yeah, absorption rate. So you get the production overhead for each department. And you get the total production cost of 106,000. And then you add on with your non-production overhead. Yeah, administrative 3% of the total production cost. And selling and distribution 3% of the prime cost. Yeah, so you just follow the questions. And you should get the total cost to be at 111,140. Okay, so since the markup is says that uh, 20%, so 20 divided by 100 times with the 111140. So you get a profit markup of 22,228. Therefore, your selling price is 133,368 ringgit. Simple. Easy, simple, and straightforward. Nothing difficult in this question. Okay, next we go to example of December 2018. MDCO has received a job from a customer in Putrajaya to build kitchen cabinet. The following costs relate to the job. Yeah, this is the material used. Okay, and labor and cutting departments. Yeah, and there are expenses. Okay, so these are the uh, calculation for the production overhead. Yeah? They give you the OAR. Uh, for cutting department and for assembly department and our number of hours used yeah. Okay, but you have to remember this the, the question give you machine hours yeah. since assembly department use direct labor hour please do not use this you use this to calculate the OA uh, okay and the administrative expenses is is charged based on 5% of production cost. So production cost is 1,500. Okay, and the profit is set up at 25% markup. Yeah, see the word markup, so you know it's divided by 100 ringgit, 100%. Okay, so this is the answer. Direct material 35,000. Okay, cutting 80 hours done with the 30 ringgit per hour. Yeah. You get the direct labor and you get the direct expense. So therefore, your prime cost is 48,700 ringgit. Okay, you put in all of your production overhead. Remember what I told you, use the, the labor hour, not the machine hours. Yeah? Okay, and then you get a total production cost plus with your, your non-production overhead. You get the total cost, calculate the production uh, profit markup, 20 divided by 100 times the total cost you get this is your mark pro profit and this is your selling price okay i would prefer if you do not round out your figure but if you round out your figure i will not penalize you so that's the end of chapter job and batch costing so we have one more chapter left to do which is the service costing which i will upload by next week so please do the rest of the question uh, for job and batch costing in your past years and we shall discuss it maybe next week. Thank you. Wabillahi taufiq wa hidayah. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.